Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the distinguished ranking member of the committee uh, and the chairman of the committee uh, for their words and efforts today. I think the, uh, the gentleman from Ohio knows that I respect his passion, um, but I rise in, in, in strong opposition to this resolution today. And uh, I believe that it should be opposed because H. Con Res 248 directing the President pursuant to the War Powers Resolution to remove United States Armed Forces from Afghanistan is not supported by the law, it is not supported by the facts, and it is not supportive of our troops. And it should be opposed. Uh, let me speak to each of those uh, issues. And, uh, first, and with regard to the facts, under the war, the war Powers Resolution requires the President to notify Congress within a specific time of committing forces. It, it, its constitutionality has been questioned over the years. This is a matter of clear public record. Uh, the gentleman cites the Constitution frequently. Uh, there is great constitutional debate about the very foundation of that legislation. But specifically, and I believe the distinguished chairman has made this point several times during the debate, uh, the powers that are being cited here um, only apply in moments where there has not been a declaration of war or a statutory authorization for the use of force. It, it, and I, I, I was here on September the 11th. I was here for the debates, Madam Speaker, over the resolution authorizing the use of force in Afghanistan. Uh, and therefore, I, I, I believe this resolution is out of order. Uh, and while I, uh, I, I don't raise a procedural motion on that basis, I, th I think it's worth noting. Secondly, I think this resolution is not supported by the facts. I just returned from a bipartisan the delegation trip to Kabul and, and Kandahar. I met with uh, General McChrystal. Stanley McChrystal is the commander of the uh, ISAF uh, forces. We met with our soldiers at Camp Eggers, went out to Afghanistan. And I have strongly supported President Obama's decision to send reinforcements into Afghanistan. The sense that we receive from our military leaders in Afghanistan, from Afghani military and political leaders, and most importantly from our soldiers on the ground, is that we are leaning into the fight. We are providing our soldiers with the resources and the reinforcements they need to succeed and to come home safe. And so now is not the time for the Congress of the United States to be second-guessing our commanders in the field and second-guessing the commander-in-chief. And so I believe, based on what I've seen and heard within the last month and a half in Afghanistan, that we have the right strategy, we have the right tactics, and we ought to continue to proceed on the course that we are proceeding on. We're talking about real lives. I can't I can't help but reflect on the experience of having been just north of Kandahar, uh, where we visited with the uh, governor of the uh, Argabad uh, River area. He spoke about the Taliban being on the run. You know, Kandahar, there's an old proverb that says, he who controls Kandahar controls Afghanistan. Uh, and the Taliban was, in effect, born uh, in Kandahar. And, and this spring, there is, as is evidence on the evening news, there is an effort by the Taliban to reclaim that historic uh, city. Uh, and, uh, uh, but as I, as I talked to the governor of uh, the Argabad River, River province, he simply said that the only thing the Taliban has anymore with population is threats. They don't have popular appeal, or so he told me. Uh, but uh, the very idea that U.S. forces or, 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 or forces in the NATO coalition would precipitously withdraw would leave a vacuum into which the Taliban would readily flow and has been discussed here eloquently uh, by Congressman Duncan Hunter, who wore the uniform in harm's way. That vacuum would be filled not just by the Taliban, but by their uh, evil twin, Al-Qaeda, to no doubt nefarious effect. So I think, this, I think this resolution is wrong on the law. I think it's wrong on the facts. But lastly, let me just say, I, I, I believe it's, it's also not supportive of our troops. I mean, it's impossible for me, in the, in the many trips that I've made downrange to visit soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, it's impossible for me to meet with those soldiers without being profoundly inspired. And I will, I will acknowledge the gentleman from Ohio has, has spoken in glowing terms about those in uniform, and I do not suggest that he's done otherwise. 
But I believe with all my heart that a resolution of this nature in the midst of a moment when we are, in fact, providing our soldiers with the reinforcements and the resources to be successful in Afghanistan has the potential of, of having a demoralizing effect on the very men and women who separated from their families and in harm's way are doing freedom's work. And so I believe this uh, resolution, however intended, uh, should be opposed. It's not supported in the law, it's not supported by the facts, and it's not supportive of our troops, and I believe it should be rejected. And I yield back.